Okay, looks like we're ready to get started. The numbers kind of leveled out. Welcome back. Um, we learned quite a bit last week and thank you to the folks who were able to join us um, for kind of a later meeting than usual. We're back to our 9 a.m. time. Um, last week we met at 1 p.m. after the state was able to give us some additional information. So I'm actually going to go just a little bit brief overview into what we've learned and kind of where we're at so far. Um, and just a reminder that you can find additional resources on this website, uh, GIA's website. We have kind of a landing page for all the resources. You can find uh, meeting, uh, meeting recordings, uh, and you can find what we currently know, um, as well as what we, what we hope to, to see coming down the pipeline. Um, today's meeting, uh, after this kind of uh, overview of what we have so far, we'll also kind of be focused on the steering committee discussion uh, and, and hear what folks think uh, based on what we know. So what we learned last week is that there will be 13 awards, one for each surf region. Uh, and for those who are unfamiliar, that's the California Economic Resiliency Fund, um, which is another grant uh, application that's out by the state in partnership with California Forward and Policy Link um, that I know IEGO is, is really putting hands on deck um, to, to, to get those funds. And so we're already seeing kind of similarities from the state um, between this effort and that effort. Uh, so it's important that we, uh, we're kind of synergetic in our methods, um, which is great that we have Jackie on board and other folks from IEGO in the room. Um, awards will be given based on the size and scope of the applicant's plan. Uh, but it's very important to note that they will only fund one application from each region. So it's good that we we kind of started going in that direction, making sure that we not only is it good practice for us, uh, um, but it's also required at this point. And so that doesn't mean that there won't be other applications. Of course, anybody can apply, but they will only fund one application for each region. So it really will be helpful for all of us to stick together on this effort um, and, and get everything that we can in. There is phase one and phase two rounds of applying and funding. Uh, phase one will see the grant application on April 1st, just a little less than a month away, um, to apply by May 2nd, another month away, and announcements will hopefully be made by May 20th um, of 2022. So this is obviously moving just uh, pretty quickly, but we still are awaiting quite a bit of information. Um, and you're supposed to receive that we are supposed to receive the funds or you know whoever gets the applications uh gets the application received by the group and accepted by the state um to receive the funds by the start of the fiscal year to meet the 2024 and 2026 deadline um phase two uh, and should anyone decide to go that, down that route and folks that do decide to go down that route um it's a little bit different there's one year planning grant um, kind of one year planning grant phase and that application is released in September with applications due in October and awards announced later that month. And the following year, there'll be full implement implementation grants for those who decide to go down the phase two path, um, but they have to meet the same 2024 and 2026 deadlines as the phase one folks. Um, there was some additional information around the lead agency, um, that there can only be one designated lead, lead agency per application, and it should be one of the required educational partners for the collaborative. Um, they can participate in several uh, applications, but can only lead one. And so um, some of those groups that are required educational um, partners for the application are AUC campus. And so for the Inland Empire, that's UC Riverside, uh, CSU campus, uh, Cal State San Bernardino is participating, but we also have Cal Poly Pomona in the room, um, uh, Community College District, uh, as well as a K through 12 district. And so they're, they're kind of options for the lead agency and, and that's um, likely a discussion a little bit later down the road, but we know, um, we know that. Uh, County offices is just kind of a side information is county offices of education can also represent K through 12 districts uh, kind of in this space, but we also know it's important to have folks who are on the ground um, with, to, to also provide their input um, in detail. There's a few, uh, there's a few other things, but I don't want to uh, dive into too much of the details kind of as a brief overview of the new information that we've gained. Um, and I think that that was kind of a, a good place to start. One last thing I want to mention um, is that they, they want for phase one to be mature collaboratives. As for what that means, um, we're awaiting a checklist from the state. Uh, for more information on that, for what qualifies as a mature collaborative, um, or maybe who should be going for phase two. And we're, we're hoping and 
we kind of think that we have the pieces together and we'll have the pieces together to be uh, possibly likely a mature collaborative, but we wouldn't necessarily know for sure until we get those details um, from the state. Uh, I'm also going to get you a link in just a few seconds and throw that into the chat once I pass it along to Carlos um, for the new state website for this effort. Um, not much more new information uh, uh, in from compared to our website, but it is the state website that they're going to be using to provide that additional information. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Carlos to start and lead um, some of the conversations around the steering committee. If there are any questions, I can answer them uh, in the chat. Carlos. Oh, thank you so much. Can you all hear me? Great. <clears throat> so what my goal is to uh, lead a discussion about um, the steering committee requirement um, and to talk about a, a potential way forward with this that's, that's a straw person that is here for us to, to dive into and tear apart and think about um, as, we, as we move towards this. Um, my goal is that we can formulate this, this steering committee. I, I hate that name but I'm gonna use it just for the sake of this discussion um, until, uh, you know, uh, before the application is released so that we're, we're raring to go. Um, and so I just, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what are the, what are the pieces of the pu puzzle? Um, thinking about all the regions, all the initiatives, all the existing collaboratives in, in this space that we call the Inland Empire. Um, just a quick side note, um, if you go learn about the surf regions, we have, we're, we're the biggest surf region uh, in terms of square miles. And, you know, Orange County gets its own little surf region. It's like, what? what what's, that, what's that all about? But that's a separate discussion. Today, I'm going to lead the discussion talking about the steering committee, and I'm going to sh share my screen. So let me make sure I have all the pieces here as I do that. Working through this. I'm just going to do a little talking right now. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. Okay, the purpose of this collaboration um, is to support four educational pathways of highest need and value for the region um, and to enact equity reforms for improved outcomes. So it's a, it's a, it's a bifurcated uh, grant, and our goal is to kind of interweave all those different pieces together. I'm going to switch to presentation mode. Tell me if you can still see my screen. Someone needs to give me an audible because I'm, you're going to disappear from me. Yeah, we can see your screen. As a presentation mode? Now we coming can. Up, coming up. Not yet. It's loading. Loading. Come on. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yep. Okay. Um, and so, just just uh, in discussions with with many many people over the last week, um, the you know I've just been trying. I've been laying out what I've been hearing are the responsibilities of the steering committee and and what are the the things that they are going to do. Um, so I, I am just going to. Put this up here. People can can read through it. I'm going to talk through some of these. So, I imagine creating a network that that is this K16 collaborative um, that supports these educational pathways. That's going to be their primary function. They are going to provide oversight on the expenditures of these dollars. And I would argue that they are the group that's making the decision as to where that money flows. And they will be required to monitor and provide reporting uh, of the progress of these initiatives. So they'll need to be able to keep track of those and generate reports. Um, they will need to expand the collaboration for the members of the network. There's, a, there's an important theme, that a pertinent value that, that we are all hearing about, and that's the value of inclusivity and openness and transparency that we need to have in this. So, you know, we need to think about always expanding the collaboration. We're never going to get everybody in the room right when we need them. We're going to always need to expand transparent processes. We need to be able to communicate progress and accountability to the community on a regular basis. 
And we need to be inclusive of the needs of the community. We need to strengthen student voice. We know that's really uh, important. It needs to be open to the community and it needs to be action oriented, organized and effective. So these are some of the, 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 the ideas that have been percolating in my head around, around this uh, work. Um, I, I don't know if, if others might have some other things that we potentially need to add to this list. Ruben um, has his hand up. I, yeah, this Go is ahead Ruben. and speak because I can't see people. Okay, I'm sorry. This is Ruben Gonzalez with Reach Out. Um, I was just, I was wondering just on the top half, I know in uh, last Friday there was a discussion about, um, you know, the state is requiring us to select two of the four or for the partnership to consider our, all four. I do see that you say highest need value. Has any determination been met or, or been has any determination uh, happened at this particular point in time that uh, is suggesting that we'll go for all four or for which two or um, and I guess what that what is that process for making that that decision that's a great question Ruben uh, right now there has been no decision made it would not be uh, appropriate for that decision to have been made at this time um, I I believe that this this steering committee um, is the is the organization that's going to make that decision and I would argue that that would be based on readiness um, uh, partnerships and and effectiveness and data suggesting that this is a high need area um, as as if, if I were to take a guess a hypothetical guess at those areas we would be looking for all four because the opportunity is, is once we got this down and we're working on this really well, there are other people we can go and get money from. So it just, it's not gonna be, I, I don't see this as a, as a one-time thing. I see this as an opportunity to be able to expand out. Um, and the areas, that, of course, the areas are our education, our, our healthcare, our, our, our business and engineering space and the, the conversations that we're hearing right now, teacher workforce, uh, early childhood workforce, uh, we're hearing about allied health, we're hearing about um, uh, in the in the um, in in the in the business sector entrepreneurship, and there's there needs to be more discussion in that space, I think, and then in engineering potentially cybersecurity, but there may be some nuances to that. But that's what I've heard, no decisions made. If you have your hand up, please, someone call them out and have them speak. Sure, Alicia, you have your hand up. Yeah, I can go next, thank you. Um, thank you, Carlos, for putting this list together. I, I appreciate it and, and certainly agree with, with you on all of these points. My question though has to do with the relationship that the steering committee would have with um, both the lead and the convener. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts around that. The, the, lead, the, the lead is, I don't think of them as a lead. They, they, are, they will be the fiscal agent for this project, right? So one of the, one of the local educational agencies, and that, that's a broad term that includes K-12 districts, uh, county offices, the universities and colleges, as Michael described, um, that would be the lead agency. Um, the relationship in terms of what that, how, how the money flows out of them, that is something that operationally that will work out and the steering committee would need to be involved in, in those processes. You could imagine that, that um, if it were UCR that were the, the, the lead LEA in this space, that UCR might be, might be creating the contracts and sending those contracts out because most of this money is gonna to go to support pathways. So it's gonna go down to the implementation level. Um, and you know, UCR might be involved in those contracts. Um, there, there are other ways to handle this and I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, now, the, the relationship between the convener, I think one of the expectations of, of, at least the way I'm thinking about this to be transparent and inclusive, is that the steering committee, once it's formed, needs to make a decision about that, about that um, 
um, uh, uh, process in terms of, of you know who the convener would be. And I'm I'm going to show you a model, and it's just it's a straw model that I, I'm going to talk about. Carlos, and, yes. Sorry to cut you off. I was afraid that you were going to move on to the next slide. There are oh, a few hands up. No, great. Uh, Louis. Yeah, uh, thanks, Carlos, for putting this together. What, one item I might consider adding to this list is um, kind of something along the lines of being guided by a set of metrics or milestones, both at the formative and summative levels as we engage in the work. That's a great addition to us. Thank you, Louis. Alex, I see your hand up. Hey, how are we doing? Good morning, beautiful people. I'm glad to be here. So, um, uh, I'm excited. So now I, my guess is we're going to be looking at, uh, cause I know you asked this question about, um, these, these entities and add into this. Um, I think also what might add to it is how the steering committee is created because sometimes, uh, partners may add additional principles or ideas. So, um, yeah, so I know I just want to put that out there because I know people have a lot of questions, but I think those questions are going to be answered once the committee has been formally formalized. And all those questions will be because that's the, the committee that's going to be basically navigating um, A through Z. So um, anyway, I'm excited. I'm glad we're here. And I can't wait to see how we uh, create this committee. Okay, great. And I, and, and I want to talk about it a little bit more. I, I want to provide, okay, so are there any hand, other hands up? You have another question, Alex? No, I'm trying to raise my hand, put my hand up, sorry. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so what, what, what I did is that I, I, I thought more about this and uh, frankly, people, this has been consuming my life as a lot of the people on the planning committee know. If this, is, this, is, this is really important for the region because I believe this is, this is going to be a fundamental shift in, in how we're doing work in the IE. And I'm very, very excited about it for our students. So I, I want to tell you a little story and then I'm going to get into some meat of making some decisions. Okay. So let's see. Things are things are not going as I had planned here. Hold on. Okay, so one of the things that we know is that in the region, you know, we have a whole collection of people that have been working for a real long time on, on, on connecting with, with, with employers, connecting across educational institutions, the communities, CBOs, whole collection of them all focused on this, you know, the Inland Empire economic vitality, right? And, and it's something that we, we've been struggling with. We look at our data, we see that we have issues related to this, both, both in terms of the, the kind of employment we have going on and in terms of our educational um, attainment. Um, and the, the, uh, the institutions and organizations are in constant reflux, constant movement to improve their, 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 their effectiveness to be able to reach this educational and economic equity for all metric. And, and this process has been going on for years. You, if you could go back and look in the, in the history books, you can see that this, is, this has been going on. And there's been huge progress, but there's also something, there's also, um, we need to be able to move further along. Back in 2015, um, the, the, the GIA governing board, the founding members of that board came together and said, let's figure out, let's figure out new ways of doing this. So they formed, they formed this, this governing board and then they formed uh, an organization. It was, it was named multiple things before it came GIA. And they, you know, they, they began thinking about how best can we, can we engage in this work? And, and building off of this whole collaborative idea, they, they formed GIA, and I know the slide's really messy, but I wanna kind of talk through it. But they formed they form GIA as a, as a, as a tool uh, to be able to be, really bring in the community and create tactical plans and actions. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yes, yeah. it's small, and, but we see it. 
Okay. And the 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 goal was to create you know community plans and the and the way that it was conceptualized was the creation of, of committees, uh, action network teams. Um, that we convened, uh, GIA convened this group of folks here, um, including employers, and they identified that these were the things that these committees need to need to uh, be focused on. And many of you in this room um, are focused, are sitting on some of these committees. Uh, and these committees are open. Anybody can attend. You can go to our website. You can check them out. And at the, the goal of these, of these committees is to create tactical plans and GIA provides scaffolding and support to these tactical plans. Um, we also have a steering committee, and this is where the nomenclature gets, gets um, tricky. Um, but we, we, have a, we have a steering committee that functions for GIA because GIA has to make decisions or the, the network needs to make decisions about who gets money. Um, we had money to give out and we'll have more money independent of the K-16 collaborative to get out. And so we put on the steering committee decisions about who is going to get um, um, grants and things that support these community tactical plans and action plans. So GIA is a facilitator in this. We don't have the ultimate decision, but they, we are the facilitator facilitator in this space. And the, this, this steering committee exists for the purposes of managing those action network teams. And so as I've been thinking about this, and I'm thinking about how we can, how we can begin to build out on this, what I'm thinking about is some sort of relationship that looks like this, that um, we have, we have, we form a collaborative and we'll talk about who sits on that collaborative in a moment. Um, and, and, but thinking about it as a way of connecting all these different things together um, and, and finding ways to, to you know, bring into that K-16 pathways, existing processes and, and methods that we use um, that we can use to move uh, action forward. Um, and, you know, the, the line between the K-16 pathways and GIA, I just put it in there as a reference. I mean, what the, the, one of the decisions of the K-16 pathways is to decide how GIA might be able to do that. We, we work with connecting people, convening people, we provide research to the region, and we have structures to distribute out resources. The vast majority of money that flows into GIA goes straight on out um, at, at, as we begin to move forward. So the, the, I, my, my, the way I'm thinking about this is that we form a, a K-16 pathways committee um, that um, would exist um, independent, um, that would have certain uh, it, people from, from the Inland Empire that would make the decisions that I was talking about before. And it would include this list of people. And that the process that we would do for this would be what we would go through a nominating process now, uh, where we select the people to fit into these pathways, uh, fit into these specific um, uh, spaces, um, and then be able to, um, you know, convene that steering committee so that commi that committee can begin making some of the decisions moving forward. But this is what I believe should be the makeup of that of that specific committee. I'm going to stop there and let's talk. Carlos, I think you articulated it well, how this can move into the existing structure that would make it stronger and also a good representation on that K-12 pathway. Carlos, is the, on, a, on a practical level, is the idea that the four chairs of the pathways, if funded, would be the lead on the kind of uh, conceptualization and even implementation and guidance of, of the actual work? The pathways that, that we are going to need to have working groups that would be 
the folks that would um, actually carry out the action on the ground. Um, and, and it would be incumbent on the working groups to, to bring in um, uh, inclusive, uh, with an inclusive approach, transparent approach, people into that space to be able to identify these pathways and, and be able to move forward with that. Did that answer your question, Louis? It was more nuanced than that. What, what was the other piece that I missed? Yeah, well, so the working group, what would be the relationship between the working groups and the steering committee? Well, the, the steering committee, I'm gonna jump up to a couple of slides. The, the um, right, that's all the animation, sorry about that. Um, the, the, so the steering committee would, would actually provide oversight to, to how these dollars move forward. And so let's, let's assume I'm gonna just throw out a, a new pathway that doesn't exist just for us for discussion. Let's say the governor said, we need more paleontologists because we've discovered new fossils, right? And, and so, you know, the, the, a working group could be created around paleontologists um, and that, that group would uh, bring in the required uh, business people into, into that space. They would bring in the, the K-12 community colleges, uh, uh, four-year universities, CBOs as necessary uh, to be able to uh, then um, you know, come up with a plan or an idea of how they're going to create these particular pathways. And then they would, they would identify the pathways. They would kind of lay those pathways out and describe how they would implement it. That information would feed into the steering committee and the steering committee would review that information and make the decisions about the funding. Um, uh, moving forward. So it would be it would be this steering committee that those 24 people would be making that particular decision. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Does that raise any concerns for you? No, I would imagine that if the if the working group put together this really great plan, vetted it, took care of all the on the ground details. By the time they get it to the steering committee, it should be ready to go. And then the, the, the working groups would be available to answer questions from the steering committee if there were any. Correct. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Right, the relationship is between the working groups and the steering committee and, and, and the decisions happen in the steering committee. And then, you know, the, the other really great benefit of this model that, that, um, that um, this hypothetical idea I'm throwing out here is that, you know, if other, if other pathways materialize um, that are important, we have a system to use to be able to, to create um, additional pathways. And there are a lot of other funders chomping at the bit to come into the region to do work. And we can, we can take those, those other pathway programs and we can begin to shop them around to other folks. But we would have a structure in place to be able to you know, capitalize on, on those resources. It may be a different lead agency or fiscal agent in those spaces, but at least we'll, we would have a structure built on current structures uh, to be able to move, move that forward. Alex Carlos, and Joseph, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Carlos, it's Diana from Reach Out. Uh, on the representation on the steering committee, I think, um, you know, on the CBO kind of bucket, I think there might be some added nuance that we may want to consider. Um, you know, the work that we've been leading since 2007 on health workforce and building diversity and equity in the health workforce. Um, so with that, you know, if there are other groups like reach out for um, the other pieces, the other sectors, you know, would they fall under the CBO or should we create kind of um, a different bucket for the groups that have been leading this work and that we would not want to run out of spaces for the people who have been, you know, leading the work for you know, many years, in our case, 15 years. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that there was consideration for sector groups that have deep connections and deep uh, work across the region. 
Yeah, the, you know, I, I think this is this is one of the one of the challenges that we face, um, Diane, uh, in that, you know, we, we do have these existing structures. I the way I the way I've been thinking about this is that the, those that 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 working groups plan would include resources to support the structures and organizations to make that happen. So you imagine the money flowing down, the steering committee making decisions, this looks ready, this doesn't look ready, but what, what does it mean to look like it's ready? Well, there's gonna be, there's gonna be infrastructure built in, there's gonna be, um, 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 you know, there's, there's gonna be existing collaborations, there's gonna be uh, pathway programs that need to be uh, strengthened, there's gonna need to be institutional and organizational support to make those things work. Um, and this is gonna happen at the pathway space, right? They're asking us for one steering committee, right? And it's like, okay, really, you might wanna think about one steering committee for each pathway. Right, but that's that's in essence what the working group should be. Some uh, a, a a model like that where you have the the you know appropriate representation to actually be able to enact this work moving forward. Alex, Joseph, and then Deborah. If you raise your hand, I think you're in order here. Uh, uh, thank you, Carlos, for doing this and taking on the pressure. I'm glad it's not me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, because, you know, as we're looking at this model in this format, I know folks are going to have a lot of questions like, is there room to add more folks uh, to the platform, which I think we Chad was trying to ask. Um, but I see what I see here looks, at least to me, good. Um, and I know you're going to want to move on to vote and some type of uh, approval process. So let me say early on that, yeah. I know this is a draft, this is not the final, because the goal was to at least get to some form of consensus today, and we can always come back and clean it up and um, finalize it another day. But what you showed so far, I want to say I love it, I agree with it, I think it's good, great work, um, and so, and also to the team who helped you with this. So, and in, in, to the CBOs and IE Go, so IE Go has submitted the BBB grant and have already created partnerships um, in those entities. So when I saw that section, I already manically knew that you were already considering some of the CBOs who've done work in the region for uh, for quite a time and IEGO already has those partnerships. So um, we, we can figure that out is what I'm trying to say. But uh, essentially um, we're down, uh, I think is a good uh, number that you picked. And so not only is my hand, my hand raised to say, thank you for the work you've done. It's also raised to say, yes, I support uh, your structure. Great. Joseph. Um, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, Joseph Williams, Rialto Unified School District. Um, I see that you have four K-12s, or I'm thinking you're saying four K-12s. Um, who who would be the decision? And I got a couple questions. Um, who would be the decision maker on um, which districts get to participate in this? And then how? Um, and then are you saying the chairs decide how the funding would get allocated to districts that participate? And then um, so that's that's one question. Um, then would you also consider open it up to more students, because if you're touching K-12, community college and university students, you know, we talk about nothing about me without me, they're all different. And so you might wanna um, have a student from K-12, have a student from community college, because you'll get different types of input. And then my last question is, is the grant requiring that you have colleges or districts? Because if you do just three colleges, you, you, I mean, if you look at districts, community college districts, um, it may open you up to more resources because districts have multiple colleges. And so I don't know if you have to have the college itself or if the district uh, could be the partner uh, because, you know, they all have different programs within the colleges that they, um, that, that, that they oversee. Hold on, Carlos, before you answer that, I know Joseph did not mention him. We haven't done introductions. But Joseph is one of the board members at community college for in San Bernardino. So his question is real, you know, real specific and important. So I just wanted to put that out there. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 at Valley. I, I mean, San Bernardino Community College District. I know Joseph's work. <clears throat> um, yeah, I I I I I think I I'd love to have more. The, I, I worry about the number, uh, Joseph, of, of, of people that we have in this space. How we go about making the decision as to who's going to represent the community in this steering committee, um, I think it needs to be on a nomination process and then a, on a voting process. I think that's the, the most transparent, transparent way uh, to, to move this forward. Um, and I, I do know that we have to have, we need to have a CSU, we need to have a, a UC involved, we need K-12 districts, and we need community college districts. Our challenge, Joseph, is that we have 12 community colleges in our region. We have three big ones, um, uh, Chafee, uh, Riverside District, San Bernardino District, um, and, and then we have a whole constellation of other smaller colleges and all of these colleges together mixed together to do this work. Um, and and, and to clarify, I'm not saying add more colleges. I'm just saying, are you required to have the colleges or the district offices at the table? Because if you do three districts, versus three colleges, it gives you access to more resources. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, I think I think that's something for us to talk about yeah, yeah. Um, in, in this space, right? I think so, that's, that's something we need to talk about. How um, will the, the K-12 uh, districts be um, decided who gets to participate? Well, that would be a question that I would throw on Edwin and Ted's lap and ask them to think about how to go about, you know, you know, uh, deciding about that space. And maybe somebody from the county, we may pick some of the larger school districts to, to be the in this space, but I think that it needs to be on a nomination process. Somebody who who um, embodies the the the, men, the mindset that we're trying to accomplish in this space. I hope we're recording this. Deborah? Good morning. Um, I just wanted to, to flag for you the, the CBOs. We need to make sure that we've got at least a couple who represent our underserved and marginalized communities in the region. Uh, folks that can keep us honest about the equity question and are we really serving the folks that we intend to serve rather than serving the same people that we always serve who seem to be um, the easiest ones with the most resources many times. So I just want to make sure that we're thinking about equity very intentionally and it's explicit in the representation that we show on this on this committee. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael? Yeah, um, I wanted to, to hop in line here and just contribute um, to the student conversation and bringing in student voices. Um, that's somewhat, somewhat an expertise of mine. I think there's a lot of ways in which it could be done. <clears throat> I think one way is having a student or multiple student voices on the steering committee itself. I think that's kind of the best way to get it done, not only including their voices in the conversation, but voting power is also important um, into the decisions being made. But it was mentioned, we are a large region. And so it is hard to kind of get a very representative sample of the students on this body. Also thinking about the amount of turnover that would exist as well as students come in and out of you know, their educational pathways. And so I'd consider multiple ways in which we can go about this as the conversation continues. Um, but we've seen that for bodies like this, a student advisory committee seems to be kind of one of the most effective ways to get a very cross-sectional student perspective in on the conversation from K through 12, community college, CSU, UC, and also including the private institutions, um, students who attend those institutions in on the conversation as well. Um, and it'd be tough to do that with one or two or three voices um, completely. And so forming a kind of side body that's able to advise some of the work, meet periodically, maybe less as often or as needed, um, but being able to be nimble as things come up. So I just want to throw that out there, um, that there has been been some thought um, put into that as well, and, and we can build additional structures as we're going forward. Yeah, I, I think if, there, if we can find organizations or help bring together existing organizations that can can form an advisory committee for this work that are that are student focused that are students. I think that would be great. There's lots of 
lots of initiatives like this scattered effort throughout the whole region. Um, and, and so thinking about, you know, how we could empower that to move forward and make sure that it covers the, you know, the, the secondary through the post-secondary space too, Michael. Those, this, those are really good points. Um, uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it would be great to put more folks in here. It just, it just makes it more difficult for folks to make a decision that when we have too many people in this space. Um, um, and you know, we by creating advisory committees that that flee into salt, you know, move into this space. I think it's a, it's a really great idea. Uh, Summer. Yeah. Uh, first, I just wanted to you know thank you, Carlos and GIA, for the very careful thought that was given to this. It definitely is very well thought out, and um, I, I agree with what you say. Sometimes, um, for lack of a better analogy, too many cooks in the kitchen makes it a little bit more difficult to make those decisions. But I, I also wanted to lift up what um, Deborah was saying in, in terms of equity. I was also thinking, you, know, you, you mentioned it at the beginning of the call where you said, we are the most vast region, right? And, and our needs are so varied and so different from Coachella Valley to the high desert to you know Riverside. So I wanna make sure that as we're making the decisions as to you know which schools, which colleges, that we have a true representation of our region, um, it, meaning as, as we're deciding, we, we may wanna consider making sure that we're giving equitable distribution to districts such as in the high desert, in Coachella Valley, in Riverside, and in you know, kind of the West End. Um, just something, you know, a food for thought when it comes to those sorts of things, because as Deborah mentioned, a lot of times we do, focus and hone in on a lot of the districts that do have a lot of supports already. And sometimes those others um, don't have um, the, the resources that they might need. So just, just again, food for thought. Alex? Yes, yeah, so uh, let's see here. It is 947 and I don't think we're gonna come to a vote today. Um, because, uh, yeah, I see where the conversation is going. That's a lot of great recommendations. Um, and this is a tough decision on, on, on Carlos and GI-18. Um, so what does this mean that next week we're going to come finalize this? Or how do we come to a final... Uh, I, I, I think we need... I think we need to... A, a couple of things. There are two things I, I need to mention, uh, Alex, and then I, I'm going to I'm going to propose something to to the group here today. <clears throat> One is that this this is a this this steering committee would would need to be um, temporal. It would have to have time limits, and there's going to be ways. There needs to be ways for people to kind of move in and out of this. So maybe two year tenure on the on the steering committee um, might be a good process, but that that's that is something that the steering committee can wrestle with. We can, um, you know, many of the CBOs in the space could provide guidance to the steering committee about how best to organize that. We have we have models in our action network teams how we do this. There's other ways that we could do that, <clears throat> and and so that's that 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 that's one thing. I I. I when I'm when I'm thinking about um, now, just as a as, as just another thought, when I think about the working groups, the working groups need to emulate this kind of representation, the 25 percent, and you know that, that there needs to be that um, uh, kind of representation, including students in that space too. Um, that's going to be a really important thing. As as for making making the decision, um, I I am comfortable with letting this sit with people um, and and think about uh, uh, and we can come back next uh, next time and 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 come to some consensus uh, model to uh, to to make the decision around the steering committee. We we need this steering committee before a lot of the other pieces can happen. Um, and and then I would I would urge us to to um, to think about the um, you know the pathways too. Are are people comfortable? If you could give, give a, like a thumb up that okay let's, let's we can we can consider this for for this time. Um, the the other way for us to do this is to is to move to nominations now. 
Um, but I, I, I think we need to take our time and do this right. I, the, the other thing that I learned, the other thing that I learned was that we're going to learn a lot in this whole process. We're going to learn, we're going to learn a lot. And there are going to be things that we do wrong that we're going to have to learn from and, and, and be able to build on as we begin to move forward. So coming up with it, with it, with this, you know, you know, thinking about this steering committee, making that decision, let's make that decision next time. Um, and, uh, and then once we have that, then we can move on to the, into the other spaces. So I, I saw a couple of thumbs up, so we will we'll push that over. I will share these slides with everybody. I'll make sure that they're cleaned up and not animated anymore. Um, do, do we have time to talk about the pathways, Michael? I think we might have just a little bit of time to tee up some of the questions, although I don't know how far the discussion might go, but we can, we can do it as best as we can. Okay, great. I'm gonna stop sharing. Awesome, and thank you so much, Carlos, for for heading up that conversation. Um, we really are building building this this plane as we fly it, and so folks who are appreciate all the folks engaging in the conversation. Your perspective is important uh, as we're moving forward and and kind of seeing what's possible and what's needed. Um, so I wanted to just have a, a, a quick discussion around some of what we've already had on the pathways. Actually, some of um, some of this has already come up in the previous discussion. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask is what should the relationship be with the working groups and the steering committee? Um, it sounds like that question was already answered. Uh, but one question I wanna pose that came up very early on in today's meeting is, is there any reason so far not to assume that we're moving forward with four pathways on still, until the steering committee makes that decision, is there a reason why we should not be moving forward with all four pathways it, as a discussion question for the group? Um, and if there's if there are no reasons, then then that's great. But I wanted to to make sure that we weren't um, that we have this this conversation and we weren't being a little presumptuous that we're moving forward with all four unless there's strong reason not to. I'm seeing no reason. <laughs> and, and Michael, not the fifth one on paleontologists? Yeah, I think we might have to take a pass on that one, Carlos. Okay. I, think, <laughs> I think that one might be all right. I see a question in the chat. Will there be enough funding for all four? That's a great question. And I think that's, it depends on the way that we parse this out. And I think it depends on the way that we move forward. They did say that the grants would be 15 to $20 million a piece. Um, and I think that that extra maybe $5 million range might be based on how many pathways are chosen and the breadth of the pathways. And so, you know, I'd, I'd like to say a strong yes, um, but I, I'm not sure if the funding will be equal um, for each of the four pathways. It really depends on what we're proposing and how expensive those things might be. Um, one pathway might need a lot more funds than another for one reason, uh, again, or another. Yeah, I would think it would be based on the needs. I see a need in all four. Um, and basically, if we can get all four and then decide as a region um, how to distribute those funds, it's more um, inclusive and to include all instead of eliminating some, but it would be a challenge to make sure that we're not just hitting the surface. We're all, we are going in depth on a couple of them, because I think that's what they'd like to see in the grant. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Becky. I'm also noticing a, a comment in the chat, the structure is on the right place. Um, want to know if there'll be a structured way to include the wisdom of groups like Emoja and Puente program. Carlos, I'm not sure if you have an answer to this question. I would love um, Lorena to maybe voice the question and, and add additional, maybe additional detail and maybe insight into those groups as well for folks who maybe are unfamiliar. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everybody. You know, um, programs like Umoja at the state level and even national level have been working with uh, African-American community and they're doing a great job. So I'm not sure if the, we're gonna have an opportunity to have their wisdom, their knowledge as part of what we're trying to do here. And the same thing with the Puente program. And Puente program is working with the Hispanic community, the Latin community. Yeah, I think, 
there's 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 a, an additional um, uh, there's another layer that we'll need to talk about as as we move forward. Once we once we settle on this, then we can move forward. There's going to be there needs to be some connective tissue across all the pathways and all the working groups. Um, and uh, you know that some of that connection connective tissue is this being able to use data sets. We have we have really good data people in in this room today um, and in in our in our region and there's an expectation that we participate in the K16 data collaborative. So th there there needs to be you know a, across the working groups data needs to be elevated. I think elevating student voice across all of the working groups. I think that is another piece of the connective tissue that kind of will unite these different these different programs together. Um, Emoja, all the student groups. That that's the place where we can get some of that representation. Um, and 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 maybe we could talk. We could think about an advisory committee that we could ask uh, some groups to form to give more information to this and and bring in representation. And that would be another place where where the student groups can can come into into space. Another connective tissue piece is the whole idea of providing students additional supports. Right. One of the things that that we know to be effective uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, post secondary completion um, is that we need scaffolding, we need supports for students as they transition across the different systems. Um, and I think that needs to be a hallmark of our application is that we really double down on providing that kind of support. And it could be through the institutions, it could be through CBOs. There are a lot of different ways that 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 that, that could be managed. And um, the um, and, 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 but I think it's part of that connective tissue. Thank you, Loren. Yeah, it's a great question. And I want to add just a little bit to what you're saying, Carlos, really is uh, part of the recovery with equity levers is and so hitting those kind of hard would would get to those pieces of providing the support um, for students. I'm also seeing another it looks like we're going back to the, the steering committee conversation, which is which is fine and great. Um, how are we including early care and education groups uh, is a question from Pam. Um, Carlos, I'm not sure if you have a thought on that. Uh, <clears throat> Oversight on my part, it should I should have put P12, not uh, and potentially we could we could um, I think that for next week we could talk about uh, adding another person that could be early childhood into that space because K12 does not cover that. Absolutely, great point. Well, I, I want to make sure that we're we're getting out of here on time. So thanks, Carlos, again for for really leading that discussion and folks for engaging and providing insight. Um, next week, we're going to be chewing on some of these topics more. I also saw the, the question by Carol, will there be concentrated efforts to resource map those efforts? I think that is part of one of the big beasts that need to be taken down um, kind of as we're as we're moving forward. And so I, I think that there will be um, quite a bit of effort to see what is already out there. I've given into some of um, what might be out there. It's a lot. And I think the challenge is that they're unconnected in a lot of areas. And so there is a lot of stuff out there, but do they have that connective tissue to each other from one place to another? And I think that's that's part of the challenge that we're, that we're gonna be grappling with. So it's a great question and part of future conversations. Um, so we'll see you next week, same, same place, <laughs> um, same time, same link, uh, same time. And, and don't be afraid to engage in between, um, sending emails and documents or uh, meeting with each other, meeting with us. Uh, don't be afraid to engage in between. This is not the only space that we need to hold for this. And, and I know that spaces will grow as we move forward and grow with this project. Um, so excited to see you all here. Excited to see you all next week. Bring a friend and uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday and enjoy your weekend. See you. Thank you.